everyone. Welcome back to Pwn TV. So I was at a Dragon Ball tournament last night, and I played my Arcane Absorption uh, OG Shinron deck, which is my set, my starter deck, uh, my starter set Dragon Ball leader, really strong leader. And basically, the goal was to just take the seven Dragon Balls and give something triple attack and smack them three times with it. And basically, the list was uh, in a previous video. And this is exactly the same list that I basically got third with this week. And it's just basically, you know, some sense of beans to overextend and some boos because it is a boo deck. So it needs some boo targets. These Bobbities actually go get boos. This is my win condition, which is the arcane boo. And it basically plays all these uh, all these guys for free. These, uh, these two play sets of Agents of Destruction, it can play them for free. So basically the goal is to just kind of use all of these other boos to chain into the arcane boo and then play a bunch of free a uh, free uh free guys basically so the curve on the dragon balls was six regular dragon balls and then one one star dragon ball and i really like that lately has been what i've been going with pretty much every time standard super combos standard negates um an alternate win con i think that's important so i have an alternate win con i did add that recently but it is pretty clutch some child's wishes and some more boos because i have to chain into the big boo and of course since the big boo requires a bobbity i got really good bobbities in this deck this bobbity basically says yeah i'm going to go ahead and and have like a cheaper uh, easier to cast agent of destruction in the early game and then in the late game i'm just going to have a bunch of them because I'm going to put it under a, a Majin Buu and it, uh, I was actually able to win without even tucking a Bobbity because the deck was that strong last night on my very last round I actually comboed away the Bobbity by mistake the turn prior and I didn't calculate it right but when I untapped and I tried to draw I couldn't draw into a replacement Bobbity and I was like fine whatever I'll put this energy boosted Buu underneath the uh, under underneath the Majin Buu and then I'll do that so I didn't get my juicy Agents of Destruction from the draw but I had enough damage to actually get lethal anyway so it worked just fine even without the Bobbity being tucked so it's a really really strong deck and of course a few other late game answers you know if you get to turn four or five the world piece coming in clutch to actually give you a free Vegeta or a free agent of destruction is pretty strong some dragon radars for recursion just to kind of dig you a little bit deeper into the deck and then the one of we talked about this in the last video the one of uh, dangerous journey Bulma, Bulma which is basically just there to actually put the arcane absorption boo back into the deck so you can actually tutor him out with this boo so basically that's how it works so you're just able to put him back in the deck with that uh, with that bomb and that was the list and that was what i played and i really liked that list it was really strong but it still is pretty weak to the broly decks that are running around so i made an anti broly deck this is an anti broly deck that i've been brewing up this morning this is a deck that i put a lot of thought into um over the last couple of days to kind of figure out what do i need to play that actually beats broly now i haven't really play tested too much against broly with this list but i did play test with version 1 and this is version 2 which I tweaked a few things after I realized some weaknesses against the Broly match I actually tweaked a few things and I think that this is a pretty strong list if you're actually going to go up against Broly the new uh, BR Broly. Uh, there's a starter deck Broly, and he has a bunch of BR Brolies that are new uh, set six and beyond prints. And these Brolies are basically like whenever they hit the the battlefield, if they leave the battlefield, then you can actually put another Broly from your hand into play. You just drop a few cards, and then you put another Broly into play, and then that that Broly that left the battlefield, it's replaced by a bigger Broly. And this is every turn that this happens, and with any amount of luck whatsoever by turn three they already have their 35,000 Broly out and they're sm smashing people with it so basically that's what you have to deal with and it's really hard to actually run a negate strategy against that deck because it does have certain battle cards that say that they can't really be negated under certain conditions and it's just a really annoying matchup even if you're playing control so I looked at the cards really carefully and I realized something Broly does have a weakness he actually does have to pitch two cards in order to play the free card from hand so he minuses his hand by three now of course when he swings he draws up to six cards so he has a six card hand when his leader swings so he can afford to minus his hand by three but if he does that enough times he's either going to win the game or he's going to deck out so how do we stop him from doing either of those 
You can try decking him if you have enough negates. I suspect that would actually work, but it seems like it's more more reactive and not proactive enough to actually win. So I wanted a proactive answer to Broly, and this is what I came up with. So basically, here's the list that we have, and I'll just talk briefly about all the card choices. Okay, so we have four Child's Wish. It's important to actually get the turns, or the early game, in play so you can actually play your deck against a deck like Broly. You want to be able to have some really good, juicy cards in play on turns two and three. So Child's Wish as a four of seems to be kind of standard. Now, for the late game, you need answers that can be used while you're tapped out. So I use... Uh, I use after image technique because my leader is a red Shenron, so uh, it's a red it's a red leader card, so I can use this. Basically, for one life card, I can stop the double striker from coming through. Uh, doesn't really negate the attack, but it just gives me such a power bonus for the combat that they can't really get over it really that much. So uh, I'm not really worried about taking double strike or triple strike if I use the after image. So those are in there just to stop the double and triple strike swings that the Broly decks have. And I think that uh, two or three copies is pretty strong after testing. Okay, for Dragon Balls, we have six of the regular Dragon Balls. And just like the other deck, one one-star ball to add to that. So I tried the Super Dragon Ball, the two-drop Super Dragon Ball. And it says draw four and then discard two. But I just didn't like it against Broly. It was good against other decks, slower decks. But against Broly, it didn't seem to really cut the mustard. There's too many other two-drops that I need to use. And I can't afford to tap out to draw four cards off uh, four of which might actually be really bad draws, or 10Ks for one that I can't use because I tapped out. So that would just be an epic punt, right? So my plan is just to get the really cheap Dragon Balls that are easy to play, and then pick away at the hand with the one-star ball. So I can grab that at any time, so that's what I do. Okay, so other ways to drag, grab, grab those Dragon Balls out early. I have two copies of Bulma. I haven't played her, but after testing against uh, Broly, it was mentioned that I should maybe put in the King Piccolo. I don't know exactly which Piccolo it is. I'm sure it's a really good card for Pilaf, but I looked at this and I'm like, you know, this looks more my style because it's definitely a one drop. The King Piccolo is probably a two or a three drop that kind of does the same thing. It's basically getting Dragon Balls out of your deck and putting them in the drop. This does the same thing. It basically basically says choose up to one Dragon Ball and place it in your drop, then shuffle for one colorless. I like the fact that it's colorless, so this is what I went with, and this is just going to really make sure that by turn two and three, I'm actually awakened with my leader. So I really think that it's a important to have some, either King Piccolo or Dragon Ball Seeker Bulma, or something along that line. Um, there's also a two-drop green trunks that you can use that can dig, but again, uh, other than a child's wish target, I just don't think it's fast enough in a deck like this, so I'm just going to go with the Dragon Ball Seeker Bulma for now. Other cards in here that are really good and fast-paced against uh, really fast decks like Broly is the Saiyan Kaba. They're going to be drawing up to six cards per turn anyway, so giving them two off to Double Strike isn't really going to help them as much as you might think. So there's really no downside to playing the Kaba. It's going to do two life damage, and it's going to put them in kill range. So I'm just using four of them. It's also a one-drop, and with my leader, basically the leader says you have to swing a battle card in order to get a Dragon Ball out of your deck. You can't just tap the leader and get two Dragon Balls. With Pilaf, you have to swing a battle card and get a Dragon Ball out of your deck. So I have a bunch of one-drops in the deck that I can swing and then get the 5k pump and the Dragon Ball grab off of this auto on my leader. That's going to allow me to awaken really, really early. That's the plan. Okay, so I don't have to actually use the auto for double strike. I can just use the red energy, play the Kaba, swing the Kaba for 5, give it a 5k with my leader and get a Dragon Ball, and then say 10,000 coming in at you. That's fine. I could do that if I wanted to. Or better yet, I can do the same thing with the Dragon Ball Seeker Bulma and not even care if it dies because it's just a Bulma. It already did its job. So I'm getting a Dragon Ball out with this Bulma, and then after that, I'm getting another Dragon Ball out by swinging the Bulma with a Pilaf. So it's just really good at grabbing cards. Now, there are other one-drops in the deck that are really, really, really good, like Hidden OP. I didn't expect the Chi-Lai Frieza Force Soldier to be so good with Pilaf, but with Pilaf, the red Shenron leader, 
That is a nuts card, because what you can do is when you play it for one green, you draw a card immediately. Off the top of your deck, you're going to draw a card. It could be a super combo, it could be anything in the deck, of course, but it's just an extra card draw. And then it's a 4,000, so when you swing it and it gets a 5k from your pilaf leader, that makes it 9,000. That's not quite lethal damage, which means that you can actually decide, do I want to give my opponent a plus one hand size? Do I want to make him take a life, or even have the option to take the life? What if I don't want to give him a card? Then I can swing this 4,000 Chilai, give it a 5k boost, now it's a 9k, that's not lethal. So they're not going to get a card off of it. But I'm going to get a draw one, and I'm going to get a Dragon Ball, and they're not getting anything off of that attack. And then they're going to focus this. And if they don't focus this, I'm going to use its ability and just get a better uh, Frieza's Army out of the deck. Easy peasy. Now there are really good Frieza's Army targets in the deck. That Chilai grabs this Chilai out of the deck every time, but I typically Typically, since I run four of each, I typically don't even need to activate the one-drop Chilai. I just always have Chilai the Beautiful when I need it, because I run four of each. So I don't really even need to pay the two here to get the Chilai and play it. I could just tap the two and play the Chilai. But either way, it works for me. And if they kill the Chilai, that's fine. I played four Child's Wish. I could just play it again and get another draw, and then another Dragon Ball when I swing it with my leader auto. So there's just a lot of really good ways here in the early game to really push out all of those answers, okay, to get the Dragon Balls out of the deck. Then you get into the mid game. That's when things get really spicy. You're going to combo away your Android 15 just saying hi. This card's basically like when it comes into play, it says you're going to drop a card. Your opponent's going to drop a card whenever this card comes into play. So you're playing it off the Child's Wish because it's just small enough to be a Child's Wish target. Perfect Child's Wish target. There are a few of them. This is one of them. Um, I really like it for the Child's Wish, but also you could just simply tap the two green and, the, and a red and then play this thing but typically you're actually playing it off the Child's Wish, or you are charging it to play your one-drop Chi-Lai on turn one. That's how I typically play it. Uh, either way, four copies of Android 15 is really going to help shred that hand size and really deny them the opportunity to actually drop two cards to play a free Broly. Basically, that's the idea. We're hitting their hand size. We're actually hitting their hand size here. We're hitting their hand size here. We're grabbing some cards with the hand size hate here. So there's just a lot of hand destruction in the deck to kind of keep the Broly hand size uh, manageable, right? Now, a um, couple other really strong cards that I'll mention. I have one copy of Is That All You Got? I used to run two in the first version, but I decided um, it wasn't the strongest negate, and against Broly in particular, it's not really doing a whole lot. It might just blindside them uh, early if they don't have an answer and they don't expect it. You can maybe just kill their Broly and then set them back a turn or two. But for the most part, it's just going to stall one turn, so you don't really want too much dead weight in the deck. So I only run the one copy, right? The other negates are the ones that take life, and I think that's more important, even though they don't negate the attack. They give the 40k boost. I still think it's important. And also, you could stack these if they swing two different things. You could say minus 10k on your 20k dude, minus 10k on your 20k uh, dude, again, with the other attack, and then just kill that thing. So you could do that. So uh, after image, I think, is a bit stronger in the deck, right? Now, more cards that are in the deck that actually help me pilot the deck. That's going to be the Dragon Radars. A note about the Dragon Radars is I've been using it to just grab two Dragon Balls from my drop and replay them. I think that that is an epic mistake, though. Um, for the same reason that I think that the deck needed Dragon Ball Seeker Bulma, I also think if I just use Dragon Radar appropriately, I could actually get all these Dragon Balls out when I need them, and I won't be behind. So basically, instead of grabbing from the drop, knowing that you have a guaranteed two Dragon Dragon Balls right off the off the drop. You could just not. You could just ignore that section of this card and basically say, you know what? That's fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the first effect. I'm gonna look at the top seven and grab two Dragon Balls or Desires. I'm gonna find two targets. It's just gonna happen. So I feel like that's probably still the stronger play in this deck. So I'm gonna actually start doing that top effect from now on, and maybe I won't get put behind because when I was testing version one of this deck, I didn't run the Dragon Ball Seeker Bulmas, but I was also using the the second uh, ability on Dragon Radar instead of the first, and I was consistently doing this, and it was just really slowing me down. Considering I can't dig out my Dragon Balls as fast with this leader as opposed to other Shenrons, um, I really think that I need to use the Dragon Radar for its first effect. So that's what we'll be doing from now on with the Dragon Radar. 
And some other spice in the deck, we have one copy of uh, basically the, the green equivalent of uh, Unbreakable Goku. Basically, this is Infernal Villainy Cell. It's a 1 plus 10,000 combo card, and you only really use it for two reasons. One, green charge. Two, it's a 10k draw one. If you have one en energy available, you can do that. Maybe even bluff it, tap out, and then have the after image available for one life. You could do something like that. That would be pretty clutch as well. But we only have one copy because we don't want to flood the deck. We don't need very many green energy energy to pilot this deck. You really only need one or two to play the deck. And then after that, basically, we don't we don't want to see any more green. We want to see just red. And then eventually, uh, eventually this is good to draw, but I wouldn't want to draw them back to back because I really don't have very many ways in the deck to untap energy. So I don't want to tap down just to give 10k boosts. I don't think that that's going to be worth. And I don't want to actually deck out either, so I don't need any more draw ones in the deck. I can easily get the deck down to like zero cards in library very quickly with this list, and I don't really need more than one copy of this kind of a cantrip in order to do that. Okay, now the super combos, we could go a lot of different ways. I'm just going to go ahead and use the Master Roshi Martial Experts. There are a lot of really good cards you can use with the Shenron Leader. This is just the one that you'd use with red. Uh, there's just one of like three or four options that you that you have, maybe even more than that, that you can play. And I think it's one of the stronger ones. Uh, just to be noted, it is an Earthling, so if you play things like Yamcha in a list similar to this, then that would be good. But for the most part, this deck is not running any Earthling uh, uh, tricks, so it doesn't really matter what super combo you use. Um, whatever you have that's foil probably will just uh, be just fine, actually. Okay, now, to get to the win conditions, I have the Dark Duo Deborah as a two of. This is basically going to snipe two of the cards in their hand, and it's just going to keep them permanently exiled. And they're just not going to be able to do anything about that. It's just going to be what happens. Eventually, it's going to start swinging 20, maybe even 25,000 power without using any combo pumps because you get a 5k on the front side of peel off. So it could just be really, really strong beater for the entire game, especially if you have them hand hated and basically locked to where they don't have their in top deck mode. Then you could just keep swinging the Debura and not even care that they're attacking it because you have so many cards in hand at this point. So that's just in there just to really make sure that you have more cards in hand than they do. And similarly, we have two copies of Foreseeing Hit that basically does the same thing, but this one allows you to cherry pick the hand, so you can look at the hand and grab two, and you can just get them spicy, spicy Brolies right out of the hand, and there's nothing they can do about it at that point. Now, you might be tempted to run Objection and a blue package in order to get Foreseeing Hit a turn early, earlier, so you can actually get this consistently, but if you use enough hand hate, I've noticed that they can't really get their Brolies out as fast, and so by turn four, you might not even be looking at a Broly on the enemy uh, side, so it doesn't really matter that it's a four drop for seeing hit if you get it out on turn four that's great if not it's just in there as another alternate win con which we'll get to now when they're at three or four life then you could probably start doing the damage and then finally end them with the lightning fast hit if they are ever at two and you have the four seeing hit in play then you could just drop this guy side note uh, the sideboard actually does have a, uh, a world piece in it so basically you could just use that instead and you could play for free with your leader effect when you turn this guy awaken this guy basically he can he could play a, a desire card for free just like the other shin runs and so you could just play the world piece on turn four or five and then actually just play the forcing hit for free and then with all that untapped energy when you have five energy you can evolve so you could just do that. Like turn five, you could be like, okay, activate leader, uh, world peace, play a free foreseeing hit. Okay, evolve foreseeing hit into lightning fast hit, GG. Basically, that is what you can do. But I don't think that it justifies playing world peace in the main board. So I'd probably side deck that unless you think that it's better in the main in a specific list. But in this list, I don't think it is. So I'm side decking it. A couple of side deck options. I'm still kind of in the brewing phase on this deck, but basically that's the goal. If it, you're essentially going to get them really low, and then you're just going to try to hit their last two life with the lightning fast hit, but you don't need to. You can actually uh, get them with several other different ways. Hey, I know this guy, Jay Polak, really cool guy. Anyway, the uh, last card I want to mention in the deck is actually four copies of Transcendent Strike. This is a new set six card. This card's basically just a, a power creeped version of the set one uh, Champa's Destruction whatever it is. I think it's, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, fitful Destruction or something like that. It's a one-drop one, one drop, uh, 
uh, card with Champa artwork on it, and it's basically an extra that does exactly the same as Transcended Strike, but it's a 12,000 or less. This is a 20,000 or less. So Power Creep, out the ass on this. Uh, Fickle Destruction, that's the name of the other card. Okay, I actually do think I have it in the sideboard, so I'll just pull it out really quick. So look at this Power Creep. Look at this Power Creep. This is just nuts. So this card... This card is the same as this card, except for one is actually 8,000 more power on it. So they're the exact same thing, right? But you have to have a red leader to use Transcendent Strike. If you have any leader, you could use Fickle, but if you have a red leader, you get the extra 8,000 power, and you could just snipe something for one red. So basically, this is a mono red deck that's just trying to really snipe stuff, and it's trying to do a lot of tricks like uh, proc Chilai. So when you actually say, okay, they're playing play Broly or something like this, and they have the turn one or turn two plays, you could basically just nuke it and also hit them with the chi lai so you could like maybe maybe you could combo the chi lai into the drop and then use the child's wish to reanimate the chi lai and then once the chi lai is in play uh then you could actually tap a red and use transcendent and then blow something up that way and then make them uh, neg their hand by one uh, forcedly so i really like the interaction that we have here this is really strong Probably the best combo in the deck is those cards, but uh, when you get to the mid game, this surprises the fuck out of them. They can't handle that. So that is just a really strong alternate win con that they're just not going to be ready for. You've already hand hated them a lot by turn four and five, so they're not going to really be able to handle this. It's just going to be GG. It's just going to be GG. But for the most part, yeah, this deck is just going to try to keep pinging them, getting the dragon balls out, playing the chi lies, hitting the hand every time that we can with uh, the combo cards to do the lethal damage and then actually just uh, use the extra cards just snipe and uh, KO things for lethal damage to proc the chi lai. and it, of course the chi lies will stack so if you have multiple out then you can actually get multiples off and there's just so many ways to get the child's wishes back so you can keep playing the chi lies, all eight of them if you need to and there's just a lot of ways to draw all the cards that you need in this deck so if you don't want to do anything to the opponent you could just play the android 15s if you want to blow up the board you can play the chi lies and then the transcendent strikes so basically this is a red-green uh, hand destruction deck, essentially is what it is. Uh, I think that it's pretty basic for your typical hand destruction deck. There's a lot of different ways you could go. Lots of this stuff could actually be swapped around, but I think uh, after testing, I think this is probably something along the lines of one of the stronger answers to Broly that you'll actually be able to play. And what's best about this deck is you don't even need to actually use the Oolong Ultimate at all, ever, the entire time. Like I said, you could just, you could just play the world piece uh, if you if you mainboard it, you could just play the the world piece on turn five, and uh, with the with the oolong effect, and then just ignore the ultimate, and then just hit him with the lightning fast hit. That that could just be what you do, not a problem. Now, I was going to put a couple of other cards in here, but I really didn't have much room. There is a uh, the card that you saw in my previous deck list, uh, the black. Uh, uh, the black Bulma, but not not this Bulma, the other one that shuffles cards back in. Uh, I could play that to actually shuffle the hit back in, but my thought process on this was that I don't really need to shuffle the hit back in because if I don't have the hit, then I don't have the hit. It's not a big deal. I could win without these five cards. They don't need to even be in the deck. Basically, the deck is just going to hand hate them and then start grinding them away and then maybe try to hit them with the double strike or something like that to get the to get the lethal damage. So that's it for this deck reveal. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about something like this, uh, how I can improve it perhaps, uh, what colors you would go with. Honestly, I really think that uh, what what what's kind of creeping up there a little bit that I would probably try another deck list to, to make it work is a blue-green list. A blue-green list that's running um, uh, the uh, Bobbities that you saw in my previous deck list. The Bobbities that actually make Agents of Destruction one less and colorless to cast. That Bobbity, you could play that for blue and then on turn two, you could just tap double blue and play your green lord slugs, and that's going to hit the, the opponent's hand, like, a lot. That's going to hit the opponent's hand a whole lot, and then you could just do that. So on turn, as early as turn two, you're just hating on their hand. And this deck is kind of still doing that on turn two in so many different ways, so I didn't really have room for the lord slug, and also talked myself out of it because I required the Bobbity to make it a two-drop, and the Bobbity is a blue card. So I didn't want to go three-color in this list, so I just decided decided not to run blue, and I just decided to run this. But if I did run, like, a blue-green list, it would be very similar to this, but I'd probably, like, sub out the Transcendent Strikes for, like, uh, Senzu Bean or something like this, and then just extend my plays a little bit more, and then just keep beating them that way. 
So that would be like the angle that I took. If I tried to do a, a blue-green hand hate list, I think it would be just as strong as this and a really strong answer to Broly, which is probably going to be the best deck in the metagame uh, coming fo moving forward. It's probably going to be Broly. There's just so many easy ways to get your four ofs out on turn three and four, and you just beat the shit out of the opponent with those cards, and there's not much they can do about it. Anyway, thanks for watching my deck reveal. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up. Again, let me know in the comments what you think about this deck reveal, and I look forward to reading them. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching my channel, and I will see you in my next video. Peace out.